Good day and welcome to the African News broadcast from Canada. My name is Sandra Asante. Headlines. In Ethiopia's Tigray crisis forces Val to fight on until blockade ends. U.S. aid chief to push for more access in Tigray. Ethiopian airlines denies airlifting arms to Tigray. This and many more stories coming up after the break. You're welcome back from the break. Thank you so much for staying with me to a very first story. The commander of the forces group in Ethiopia's northern Tigray region has stated they will continue fighting until their terms for a ceasefire are met. General Sarkan Gabritensai said the group aims to force the federal government to lift a blockade in the region and agree to a political solution to the crisis. The government has not reacted to the forces' conditions, but thousands has been killed since the war broke out in November last year. Millions of people have also been displaced by the fighting, which both sides have been accused of committing human rights abuses and war crimes. At least 400,000 people are living in famine condition, according to the UN estimate, with access to the region still being hampered. The UN World Food Programme lorries did not manage to reach Tigray at the weekend after a long delay because of the security concerns. Despite the government announcing a unilateral ceasefire in June after the forces made significant gains, including the recapture of the region's capital, Bikeli, it has continued to mobilize militias from other parts of the country to help stall all forces' advance in neighboring Afar and Amhara region. Still in Ethiopia and Ethiopia's national career, Ethiopian airlines have denied reports that it shipped armed to the conflict hit Tigray region. The airline said that after the airspace war reopened, it only gave commercial essential services by transporting civilians. Flight to and from Tigray region has been suspended because of the conflict that started in November 2020. The airspace was reopened in December 2020, then closed again a few weeks ago when Tigray forces started fighting against the pro-government forces. Ethiopian Airlines says it has had no flight to the region since the recent closure. The airline says the reports are from people who want to defame and spoil its image. It says photos of uniform officers disembarking are old and that had never transported soldiers to combat area. Our next story in Ethiopia, the head of the U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, Samantha Power, is due to visit Ethiopia in a push for more humanitarian access to be allowed into conflict hit Tigray region. Ms. Power on Sunday held a meeting with Sudanese Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdak and other officials on Sudan's role regional stability with thousands of refugees from the Tigray region hosted in the country. The aid agency said the catastrophic situation will only get worse if there is no urgent humanitarian assistance to the region. Last week, the U.S. called for authorities to allow in aid to be conflict hit northern region, where hundreds of thousands are already experiencing Farming-like conditions, the U.S. is providing over $149 million in humanitarian assistance to the region. We move to Sudan now and U.S. aid administrator Samantha Power pledged to support democratic transition in Sudan and call on the Sudanese officials to achieve justice and remove obstacles obstructing humanitarian activities. The visiting USA chief met with the Sudanese Prime Minister Amdala Hamdok, the Foreign Minister Mariam Almadi, and the head of the Sovereign Council Abdul Fattah al behran Power also held a press conference where she reiterated her support to the Sudanese revolution and the action of the civilian-led government to achieve reforms and prepare the country for the general elections in 2024. 
according to a statement released by the U.S. aid after her meeting with the Sudanese officials. Samantha discussed ways to support the government to implement reforms. So she also highlighted the persistence of bureaucratic obstacles that U.S. aid and other international partners face in Sudan and urged the CTLG to facilitate the work of external actors providing assistance to Sudan during this critical period in the country's history. Aid workers say they are still facing restrictions by the security service, particularly in Defar, where a holdout forces group still control some parts of the mountainous Jabel Mara area. During her press conference, she said the U.S. aid will provide $700 million for the humanitarian assistance, democratic reforms, and capacity building. The U.S. had said that power during her meeting with Al-Bahan stressed the urgency of holding to account to those in the security forces responsible for the attack on civilian protesters. The head of the Sovereign Council reaffirmed his commitment to unite and various armed actors under the unified command before the end of the transitional period said the statement the u.s official also told reporters that she understands the frustrations of the sudanese people as a result of the tough economic reforms she added that she experienced a power outage during the meeting in Khartoum. during the dinner with some of the sudanese ministers Pass discussed their plans for overcoming the legacy of corruption and mismanagement by the former regime and how the United States and U.S. aid can support these efforts. Our final story is still in Sudan and Prime Minister Abdullah Hamda called on the Forces for Freedom and Change, FFC, leaders to exert more efforts to integrate the holdout group to the ruling coalition. On Sunday, Hamda met with the FFC John Joint committee, including the Central Council Group, the National Uma Party and UP, and the Sudanese Revolutionary Front (SRF) that agreed to reunite and form a new structure for the board coalition. This meeting took place days after another meeting he held with some group led by Mini Min Nari. The holdout of factions said ready to rejoin the. Historical FFC but requests to delay the appointment of governors and the formation of the Legislative Council and to prioritize reforming the coalition structures first. Hamto called the FFC Joint Committee to make an effort to reintegrate the other forces that are not party of the forces of freedom and change. Cabinet in a statement released this after the meeting. The meeting further discussed the Prime Minister's initiative on the national crisis and issues of transition, the way forward to reform state institutions and unify the forces supporting the transition in one entity. It is worth it to note that Minawi had split from the SRF during the peace talks in Juba and formed a separate SRF faction, but he remained committed to the peace process. The Sudanese Communities Party, which is opposed to the economic reforms implemented by the transitional government, rejected calls to rejoin the United FFC. This is Raju the Kettens on African News. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Sandra Asante. Do have a great day.